Today, we dance with a stripper. Welcome back to Wood Chips and Black Steel. Today we're back on the 1905 Ithaca and we're going to do a survey of the buttstock. And the plan is to strip away all of the finish that apparently was applied sometime in this firearms past. And I want to get that off so that I can start looking at and doing a, a more critical uh, look or survey of, of, the, of the gun stock so I can figure out what I need to do to, to do the repair. And then to do the restoration of the butt stock so that we're making it look something like it looked back in 1905. Um, all right. Now I mentioned early on in the series that this buttstock has a lot of issues that we need to work through, uh, many of which are the different cracks in the, in the, in the stock, so we're going to do that. Now I've already done a test on this finish using denatured alcohol and Q-tips, and I cleared away a section right here, uh, and it came away really quite easily and then we're able to get back down into that original finish down below. And that finish very closely mirrors the, the finish that's on the, the forearm for, for both color and, and shine. So I think what's below this is, is pretty clearly, in my mind, the original finish. We need to get down to that so we get to see what what does buttstock look like in its original configuration? That, that's one of the things we needed to do. But by using the denatured alcohol, it tells me that, that whoever added this finish probably used a simple shellac. Uh, shellac was something that was real readily available in, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and, and a lot of people would use that as, as a go-to finish. It could be some kind of a varnish as well, but I don't, I don't really know that for the purpose of this restoration that I, that I care to identify what was put on it. But clearly, um, it, is, it is a darker finish that we need to get off. Before I do that, though, I need to get the remaining hardware off, off this stock. And we'll take some photo close-ups of this just for future historic record. And we'll do that before I pull that hardware off. All right, with that done, I want to get these parts removed. And the first thing I'm going to take off is the grip cap. <clears throat> this screw is actually in remarkably good shape. Let's see if this wants to pop off. We get to see a little bit of what that finish looked like below. I want to get this, this sling swivel off. Let's see if we can do this. Yeah. I want to be careful I don't bend it. This is not something that you see a lot of on these old shotguns. So this is actually a pretty neat feature. And because it shows up on the barrel itself, I'm pretty confident that it was intended to be there from the factory. And then the last thing we need to do is remove these two screws for the butt plate. The butt plate might be a little bit of an issue for me because it has been chipped. I am going 
going to try and clean it. Um, see what looks like it looks like under all of the all the stuff. Uh, again, you can see that original that original wood uh, down underneath the pad. It's actually a piece of nearly quarter sawn wood, which is good because it makes that stock um, much more stable. I can still see a lot of the the Ithaca um, marks or, or stampings under this, but I don't know how well it's going to show up. And then it has this large chip right here. Uh, there's a couple ways that I might be able to fix this. Uh, I might be able to add back. I'm not sure what what this material is. Um, some kind of a early plastic, I'm assuming. But we'll figure that out. Um, I may I may be able to to do what I've done to others in the past and actually apply in a, a black or a dark epoxy to this, and then. Um, reshape it. We'll see, we'll see how that is when we, when we get to that point in the restoration. We have to strip off all of this finish and it is not going to be a fun process. Um, so I'm going to use this stripper uh, that was um, created by a good friend of mine, Mark. Now Mark has been in the restoration business for 50 years. It is it is how he makes his living. Uh, Mark has been a friend and a mentor for me for, for nearly 30 years. Um, and if you remember from my bio video, I talked about a project that I worked on down in Washington, D.C. at the EEOB. Mark was the one that actually invited me down to, to help him or work on that project. Mark works on some, some very high-end finishes, very high-end projects. Uh, both for clients and for some major museums around around the, the country and the projects that he works on are very usually very very delicate so uh, when he when he goes into work on these projects he, he wants to make sure that that he's not using um, methods that are going to damage the underlying um, materials or the underlying um, object or furniture that he's working on anyway so Mark and I uh, created this um, this stripper and this stripper is a fairly mild stripper and it's designed uh, to to be gentle to not only to the to the finishes but to, to strip these layers off one layer at a time so this is something that that Mark shared with me uh, this is this is his invention I make no claims to it it's a gel and as Mark tells me just get the gel on and let it do what it's supposed to do I could strip all of this with denatured alcohol because, I, like I said, I believe this is a shellac. But I like Mark Stripper, so we're going to do this. It's a little bit slower than, than some of the finishes or strippers that you might find in the store. But again, this is a restoration, and I am trying to honor as much of the originality of this as I can always trying to discover what's beneath the layers where I can and always trying to do as minimal damage to to the object as I can I've said many times in my videos that restoration is a game of patience and I've said this that it to me, it doesn't matter if it's an old gun, an old guitar, or one of the Jeeps that I'm working on. I just, I'm, I'm always wanting to be respectful of those original makers, of those, those folks that put in the hard work all those years ago. And it's very easy to just run in and make things new again. But that's not what restoration truly is, at least why it isn't in, in my book or in my training.
if you can see this stuff coming off. Um, it is. It's going right down to the original finish. All right, I'm going to let this soak for a little bit, and then I'll bring you back when it's had some time to work, and we'll show you the results as we uh, remove all this garbage that's on top. All right, see you in a bit. I've let the gel soak for the last five hours, and I'm going to go back over it again with the acetone and see if I can get some more of this off. This is on really thick, so this is taking a little bit more effort out of out of the process than I than I thought it would. Let's give this thing a try. Again, we're letting the the acetone work with the gel, letting it get in under under the gel and under the finish, and see if we can't pull just as much of that off as we can. Every act every application rather of the acetone really does help move this. I'm thinking I might move over to the denatured alcohol and see if that doesn't move this a little bit quicker. Again, we're looking to use a relatively mild thinner, but we also want something that evaporates out fairly quickly. I mentioned earlier that there are a lot of strippers on the market that are pretty aggressive. But I've seen the results of those, and some of those really get in and uh, get into the pores of the wood and then either destroy the structure of the, the fibers of the wood or, at the end, make a lot more work. That's much better. That's much better. Hopefully you can get a good look or set a sense of how that is just pulling that finish off. I mean, this stuff is just, just so, so tenacious. Which again, its tenacity is what leads me to believe that it's shellac. So this finish reacts much much nicer and is much more aggressive with the uh, denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol is actually one of the components of a, of a um, shellac finish. I'm going to uh, take you back off camera again. Uh, this is going to take me another half hour or so. This is coming off nice. I'll show you what it looks like when we get done. All right, we have all that finish, or all that shellac off, and we're down to the, the original wood. Um, there's a little bit of that original finish left too, not a lot. Um, and you can see, I hope, that we're getting down in our colors. So we've gotten rid of all that black shellac, and we've gotten down to that original, original wood, that original color. What this has revealed is literally this gun stock is scarred. This gun is scarred. It, it was a tool. It was really well used. Uh, when we come back our next video, then I want to spend some time looking at 
the damage to this stock, looking at the scars and seeing what, what they might tell us. Um, mostly it's in pretty good shape and I'm not thinking I'm going to have to do remove a whole lot of wood, a whole lot of material to get this down so that uh, we've gotten rid of most of those scars. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, make comments, ask questions, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, ring the bell so you get notified the next time I post a video. I'll see you in the next one.